Zach, please tell us what league position out of 10 is Luck now going to end the season in? Mm, I think... Hello, welcome back to the Cricket Nerds podcast. Today, we talk about Luck now. We talk about big man KL. We talk about small man Quinton. And I'm excited. So, Benj, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm good, thank you. Ready to film some more this week. Brilliant. Uh, Zach, how are you doing, mate? I'm very well, thanks. Yeah, all good. So, what is your opinion on the Look Now 11, Zach? Um, I think that they have a pretty good team. I would say that they... I guess any team where you're opening with Kara Hall and Quinton de Kock is going to be, is going to do all right. Um, but we've seen that it's not all about having the top order. Um, we've seen that with Sunrisers Hyderabad in the past when they've had David Warner, Johnny Bairstow, potentially Jason Roy and Kane Williamson. But if you've got no one to follow, then then that's where the issues are. But look now, Super Giants do have players to follow. They've got uh, Marcus Stoinis, who's a good finisher. Deepak Kuda, who's done well. Uh, Krunal Pandya, Jason Holder, they've got players who can bat down the order and finish in innings as well as set you up at the top of the order with Kara Hall and Quinton de Kock. So I think, look now, Super Giants, in terms of batting strength, they're one of the best in the tournament. I'd say you're right. What do you think about their bowling bench? Um, mixed, I feel, about their bowling. I mean, clearly they've got Mark Wood, who, if he's plays and he's fit and he's there for the whole IPL, great. Um, I think it's very clear that a lot of the English players aren't going to be there for the whole IPL because they'll be jetting off to uh, compete in the Test Series. Um, I mean, aside from Mark Woods, you've also got Jason Holder, who is a fantastic all-rounder. Um, I'm, I'm expecting him to be in the Look Now first 11. Um, and then Krunel Pandya to be sort of that lower to middle order and also offer that spin option. Um, I'm not sure they really got any out and out spinners. That might be one of their weaknesses. They've got Ravi um, Bishnoi. Aside from Ravi Bishnoi, the right arm googly bowler. Um, but aside from Ravi, the, there's not really an out and out spinner, is there? Really, like, yeah, you'll get four overs from, from Ravi Bishnoi. He can get a bit of tap, as we have seen in the recent um, T20 series. Um, but yeah, when you've got Jason Holder and Mark Wood with you, not to mention Avesh Khan, I think Avesh Khan was one of the best pickups um, of the auction. I think he definitely is a young up-and-comer. So I think the seam attack may be the best in the league, aside from Mumbai Indians. Um, but I think they lack a little bit with the spin options. I would actually say that their seam attack is their weak point. I wouldn't say that they've got one of the strongest ones because like Avesh Khan had a very good season last year. And yeah, he's good. And yeah, he'll probably do it again. Um, but last year, Avesh Khan played for Delhi Capitals and had some real, real experienced bowlers around him. Whereas for Luck now, he's got Jason Holder, who's very experienced. Um, and that's about it. Mark Wood. Mark Wood's not... I wouldn't say Mark Wood's experienced, especially in the, in the IPL. He's only played one game in the IPL and he got hit around. I think he'll do all right. I don't see Mark Wood having a bad season. Um, but it's just who's going to bowl at the death with Avesh Khan? They've got Desmantha Chamira from Sri Lanka, who is who is a pretty good fast bowler, and he might um, see quite a few games just to bolster up that that death bowling. Um, so, yeah, I would say that their their pace bowling in particular is where they're almost lacking a little bit of variety. So I'm going to go ahead and potentially disagree with both of you on both of your points, um, <laughs> and this is what the the real viewers. You know, they, they look out for, they love it when we all disagree because I think you've got two pretty good pace, um, pace bowlers for the death in Jason Holder and Avesh Khan. Jason Holder's kind of proven 
his worth with death bowling in the last few series. Like he's got some sneaky slower balls, and because it's coming from about nine foot high, where his release point is, it's it's even harder to judge the length there um, and the amount of bounce he's going to get and the pace. So I think they've got two really good um, pace bowlers as far as spinners go. Um, Ravi Bishnoi is really good. I think he's just going to get better as well. Um, as you know, I was pretty gutted when uh, Punjab just you know couldn't nail him down. But um, yeah, I think they've got a real up and comer there. And I think he's only going to get better, especially being in and around the Indian setup now. And then also they've got Krunal Panja, who is a very good left arm slow bowler. And they've also got a few overs from Deepak Huda, who's proven himself as a relatively decent off spinner. So they've got players there that can bowl um, spin. But I don't know how much you guys uh, have read upon your Indian drama recently, but as the Indian drama correspondent, I'm happy to enlighten you on the beef that has gone down between uh, Krunal and Deepak. Because I think it was either one or two seasons ago, <clears throat> Uh, within one of the domestic tournaments, uh, basically they used to both play for Baroda. I don't know how you actually pronounce it. Um, and they had a huge falling out to the point where uh, Deepak Huda actually left. He plays for Rajasthan now. And uh, like, I think he accused Krunal Panja of like bullying and being awful. Um, and yeah, so there is, there is no love lost between those two. And if they're batting at like, you know, four and six in the order, there's a very high possibility we'll see those two batting in the middle, trying their best to run each other out. So that could be the main weakness of Lucknow Supergiants, a fist fight in the middle. Um, probably wouldn't do the best. Uh, wow. But, <laughs> I, I, I mean, they haven't patched things up either. No. Nope. Oh, wow. do you, what do you think the, the middle order would be? Like, it would probably consist of Krunal, Deepak Kudra and Marcus Stoinis. That would be the, the core of that. Do you think we'd see, like, Krunal, Stoin, Huda or Krunal, Huda, Stoin? Or would it sort of depend on the situation? Or just chuck in Manish Pandey as the cool head in the middle of it all. You know? Yeah, just calming oh, them both. <laughs> Manish yeah. Pandey, I think he's one of the imposters of the whole auction. I think Manish Pandey isn't a very good batsman. Really? Opinion. <laughs> I think, well, he's, I think he's quite underrated, actually. I think he, he's gone at a slow strike rate in the last few seasons, but you've got to think of who he's actually been playing for. You know, he's been he's been the sort of the last man uh, in a Sunrisers setup where they just throw overseas at their top order and then have Rashid Khan. You know, they, they haven't had a middle order yet. And I think Manish Pandey's a bit like K.L. Rahul in that I think he's pretty decent, but he's just been forced to play at a slow strike rate. But have to be proven wrong because they're not my team. Well, I guess with with um, the Lucknow team, with K.L. Rahul opening the batting, last year with Punjab, they didn't have the batters to follow after the top four or five, especially when... Um, West Indian Poran, there we go. When Poran was, wasn't firing, then there was a lot of pressure on him and he didn't bat in the free way that we we know him to bat in. Um, I think at the start of the season, he hit a century. Um, and so he, he's capable of playing like amazing innings. And I think with having the players around him, like Quinton de Kock, who's going to take a lot of the pressure off him, having players to come who can finish off an in innings like Jason Holder and Marcus Stoinis, then that will really help him. And, and if Quinton de Kock, is having a bad time, then it doesn't matter because Kara Rahul's wicketkeeper and they can bring in um, Evan Lewis, who's a very good replacement. So they've got... Not bad. That's not bad at all. They're covered in yeah. their batting, definitely. Um, are they, they're missing an overseas player. They've only bought seven overseas players. Um, well, they also... Did you see in the auction, they spent um, 9.2 crore. So they were the only team to actually go over their budget in the auction. Um, and there must have been some special allowance so that the, the owners... You mean 92 over. crore? 92. No. They spent an extra 20 lakhs, 90.2 crore, I think it was. Okay. okay. 
they took down extra 20 lakhs to get like a 23rd squad member because they spent so much money on the other players like Tenkro on, on, on Abesh Khan and also having KL as the most well-paid person in the whole of the IPL. Mm. Um, yeah, I don't think, we haven't talked about it, but I also don't think, aside from Evan Lewis frequenting the cock, I don't think they've got that much cover. Like, Kyle Myers, Evan Lewis and Tremera are their other overseas who, we, as you said, Zach, they're missing one who we would expect them to come in if if any of the others were playing. But then in terms of, like, Indian coverage, there's no real big names in there. Like, I just want to quickly talk about Krishnapa Gautham, who <laughs> went for 90 lakh in this auction, um, who Chennai last year, for some reason, paid 9.75 crore for and then didn't play him once. I think he was a substitute fielder and dropped a catch. So he's, he's taken a big now. he's taken a big old pay cut. Um, I mean, he's a bowling all-rounder, but I expect we'll probably see him in the first 11. But aside from Zach, as you've mentioned, that little bit of cover for the fast bowler and well with with, with Carl Myers and, and, and Evan Lewis, there's not really much more cover in there. They've not really got much squad depth. I can so see Mullen Bowler. I mean, no, well, yeah, but but we've got one or two players here here, don't we? Like, you know, it'll probably we'll see how they fare. But I think look now, they're really well on getting an a, a, a eleven, and then some other guys. That was sort of their tactic. Let's get an eleven and some other guys, and and it looks like you know we'll see if that strategy works this year. Cool. Any well, final I think comments? A, I think that's a good place to end. Um, scathing review. Um, a pretty good side, but maybe not a very good squad. So uh, I'm going to finish it with Zach. Please tell us what league position out of 10 is Luck now going to end the season in? Mm, I think death bowling is going to hurt them, but they're going to have a pretty good season. They're going to finish fifth, just outside the top four. There we go. You heard it here first, folks. So we'll see you guys next time on the cricket nerds podcast thank you very much for watching uh please subscribe please like we're aiming for a hundred subscribers by the end of the year if we don't get it then benji's gonna go bald we'll never do a <laughs> podcast again <laughs> yeah so you know please please subscribe in fact no that's an is if we get it benji's gonna go bald there's the incentive yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, if we get it i'll score my first 50 yeah, and we'll film it. We'll get we'll get a GoPro and <laughs> we'll open the bench this season. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. See you guys on the flip. Let's cut some of that out at the end. <laughs>